Hello, I'm Rich and I was wanting to make a electric bike frame from scratch and there was no tube benders on the market within a reasonable price to do this. So I've taken a low cost tube bender, I've modified it and I've been able to produce some very difficult bends which I'm very happy with and this video is about that. Enjoy. So when the tube bender arrived I tried different ways of mounting it to something sturdy I even bolted it to a wooden sleeper and parked my car on it and it still was moving. So it obviously needed something extremely sturdy to mount it to. Um, now I don't have a workbench or anything like that. So what I've decided to go for is to take some recycled steel. Here we've got some old square tubing off a metal desk. And I've got a bit of flat steel plate which is 5mm thick. It's off an old oil tanker. All I'm going to do is take the four lengths of square steel, weld them all together as an upright, take the steel plate, cut it in two, weld half to the top and half to the bottom, drill a couple of holes and bolt it down to some concrete. Then fix the bender to the top and I've got myself a nice little stand to work with. Now I'm just going to run through some details on the tube bender and what I did to make it work for me. Firstly, the tube that I'll be using is 25mm diameter stainless steel. Its walls are 1.65mm thick. It is polished, so a very nice colour. I was a bit limited for choice as it is currently the coronavirus pandemic, so we're all in lockdown. So going with the polished stainless steel, it's already a brilliant looking material, so probably won't even need to spray it. But we'll have to wait and see when I weld it what it comes out looking like. Now in the description of these tube benders, they say they can bend tube which has a diameter of 25mm and a wall thickness up to 2mm thick. Uh, first of all, this is extremely difficult to do with the handle they provide. The leverage is just inadequate. What I actually did was take a, about a length of 2 meter steel pipe to extend the handle round to get enough leverage to physically force the roller to bend the tube. Now obviously that's going to put a lot of force on the tube bender and on whatever you've mounted it to. That's why in my video you can see the stand does uh, flex quite a little bit because it is uh, taking a lot of force to bend this tube. Um, just keep in mind that whatever surface you mount it to, e either a workbench or if you do the same as me, yeah, it's going to need to be extremely sturdy. The only other item out there on the market with a similar sort of price is a hydraulic press. Now that's actually a pipe bender not a tube bender. The difference between pipe and tube is pipes measured from the inner diameter as it carries liquids and gases. Um, the tube is measured from the outer diameter as it's a structural material. So with the tube bender it wraps the tube around the die so throughout the bend it has multiple points of contact creating a perfect bend. When using the pipe press, instead of having multiple points of contact, you only have one. So as the die gets forced into the tube, it's going to put a lot more stress on one point of that tube, which can cause it to kink instantly. Some people try to get around this by filling the tube with sand and compacting it. However, I personally have not tried this, so I'm not sure if it would work. You also have the limitations of only being able to bend to a 90 degree angle. So with me, I needed the full 180, so I've gone straight for the tube bender. So the reason I'm putting all this together is because I'm building an electric bike, and this is going to be used to make the frame. Because it's an electric bike, it's going to be quite heavy due to the motor and the battery. Therefore, why I'm going for quite a heavy tube material, which is also quite cost effective. I'm going to be making some videos on how I've made the bike and how it runs and performs. So if you are interested, then keep tuned into the channel and uh, I'll have some videos up shortly. Now the next modification I made was to the actual roller that you can see here. Basically, if you are wanting to use the 25mm die, then you will have to thicken the walls. As uh, the first time I used it, there's so much force put on the walls of the roller as the tube goes from a circular shape into a oval shape. It actually cracks the walls of the roller. 
because they are far too thin. So what I did was I t took a bead of weld and put it around each side, which gave it the extra strength. So to actually achieve a bend with this device, you take this little hook bit, just put it down the tube. Now this is going to actually work as the anchor for the device, which will keep the tube sturdy as the roller goes around to bend it. So you need to make sure you get that nice and tight. Next of all, we're going to put the roller in. Can get quite a lengthy process if you're doing quite a lot of bends, as there is a knack to getting it in the right order of how it fits together. Next, we're going to take that extended handle, just slot it on, and we're going to nip up the tube. Then we're going to just slowly in. I like to do little bursts of force, start bending the tube around the die. As you can see, it takes quite a lot of force to actually bend it around. You can probably see where the hook is. There's a bit of masking tape wrapped around. I just put that on just to give the tube a bit of protection as much as I can really because that obviously is putting a lot of force on that one part of the tube. Now Welly's probably on the best footwear to be wearing especially standing on these rocks but they get the job done. And it looks like we have a nice 180 degree bend there. One thing I did notice after doing this bend was there was two very small little kinks in, uh, which were formed in the last few degrees of the 180. Um, they're ve very small, barely noticeable, they don't bother me at all. Um, but I later discovered that they can be avoided by, instead of doing the bend in one go, if you do it say a quarter, go back, tighten the roller, then do it to a half, then go back tighten it again and you continue to do this about four times within the one uh, full bend then you can avoid them kinks as you can see there's quite a bit of tension in the tube still so you just gotta give it a bit of a pull to pop it off and it's created this beautiful curve and that's them two little kinks there on the right that you can see but for my first first bend, not too bad.